Okay. All right. Hello, Pritam. How are you doing? I'm doing very fine. Thank you for asking. So, Pritam, congratulations on your score. Um, 740, Q50, and V40. And I believe you started from a 500, right? 500 or uh, 550 approximately. 40. Yes. yes. And yes. I could see that your starting score was uh, 39 percentile in both verbal and quant. And your that your final score is also upwards of 90 percentile in both quant and verbal. So really very balanced score overall. Um, so Pritam, I'd like to understand how what what were the three areas where EGMAT helped you um, go from your five, 500 to, to the 740 score? Um, so I, I would actually say that initially I was very really overconfident and I thought that I could prepare for GMAT myself and I just brushed up a bit from the OG and took look, looked up the uh, concepts in math, quant especially, and I got a 540 and that's when I realized that it was a course provider. So after a bit of research and, you know, a friend's recommendation, I took up eGMAT. Uh, he actually mentioned that eGMAT is good for verbal as well and I thought I'd give it a shot. And uh, I initially started from quant in EGMAT, and I really like the course curriculum. It's very structured uh, because first they teach you the concepts, you know, video by video. Then there is revision for after every uh, concept. Then there is process skills. Then there are quiz based on process skills. Then there is GMAT skills. Then there are questions which you would expect to be seen in a GMAT exam. So all, all in all, I would say every topic was very well covered. And the moment I finished my quant portion in three weeks, my score shot up from a 540 to 69700. So that's, I mean, one place where I would say EGMAT uh, course really helped me out because my quant then became rock solid. I did not have to worry about quant a lot. Although it requires practice every day, the scholarium comes into picture. It shows, you know, which topics are you strong at. Like in my scholarium, I remember that number of properties or something I was very weak in. And the... Analysis. There was a lot of detailed analysis. You know where were you going wrong? Uh, which topic is weaker? And like you know, advanced topics uh, was good for me, like probability and PNC. So I could focus more on number property. It's a it's a very like nice product, I would say. Uh, I mean, thanks to you guys. Uh, and uh, so this is where like you know the, uh, the product helped me out. And thirdly, I would say is the is is the scholar in you, like you know. <clears throat> Especially for verbal, the in the verbal uh, section of GMAT, there is not a lot of theory. Like there is just you know a bunch of theory for SC, and there is just you have to just practice you know critical thinking as well as reading comprehension. But the sheer volume of questions that was there in the mm -hmm. scholarium, with the uh, step by step feedback, you know that why did you go wrong? And then I I we, I actually uh, was revising every answer in terms of uh, understanding. Why did I choose the option which I chose and mm -hmm. try to understand the reasoning behind that? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was a very, like, you know, <clears throat> uh, it's a good database, I would say. I have very, very well prepared questions, and most of the questions' um, quality is actually what you can see in the GMAT exam as well, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the verbal section of the scholar in you. Mm -hmm. So, this is how actually the eGMAT course helped me out in my program, in my preparation. Although I would have, I have one feedback that, that, you know, I mean, money is not a problem for any um, person who wants to go for GMAT, right? Mm -hmm. Five mock tests of Sigma X is very less. I mean, yeah, uh, okay. the Sigma X is a very uh, awesome uh, mock test, I would say, because mm -hmm. again, after, after finishing the test, you get section wise breakup that you know in critical thinking you got a v40 in sentence question this is how you're going wrong this is how much time you're taking any question so uh it's a very effective uh, analysis and i didn't find that kind of analysis in most of the other um test providers i took a lot of mock tests actually mm -hmm. so that's just one like recommendation that increased the number of uh, mock tests from five to maybe ten mm -hmm. uh, but that's just me that's just me talking Mm -hmm. Maybe five is enough for the for other people. So yeah, that was kind of my journey with the EGMAT course. Okay. So I'll so I'll address the mock test bit. I looked at your account, uh, Pritam, and I know that you have 
exhaustively utilize coleranium. And I could see that your ability improved as you started taking more and more quizzes. And since the last two, so you prepared from in December, January, and a, and, and a little bit in February, right? And I can see that you were very consistent throughout your prep. I mean, it was consistent uh, amount of effort that you put in. Um, so in terms of mocks, coming back to that, um, your prep did not include much of test readiness. That is why you felt that mock num five mocks are not sufficient. So had you written to us, and I, and I know that you didn't write to us at all during your prep, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I think you were just facing some issues with the official mocks, which is where the support team helped you out. But other than yeah. that, you didn't reach out to us for, for any help. Had you done that, we would have then given you proper test readiness protocol. So before you take any mock, you ha you're supposed to take a series of test readiness quizzes, which really help you prepare for the mock so that you don't necessarily okay. need to sit through for that two and a half hour long mock test. Mm -hmm. So that is the step that you skipped, which is why you felt the need to 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 have more mocks. So I completely understand where you're coming from. I kind of brute force the whole thing, yes. you know, like just keep on using mocks. Yeah. I and I could see that. Um, likewise, I also recognize that cementing. Um, you didn't do it as according to the process that we have, but you got the results because you were focused on applying the the process from the standpoint of as as you said you know you how you reviewed each and every question i believe not just in stage two you actually reviewed your quizzes in stage one also i mean and uh, so if you uh, and, and let me just share my screen real quick because i was when i see such accounts i really feel very happy because that just shows the amount of diligence that that students put in so i'm just uh, um let me share my screen and uh, show that so here's your account and I, I look at, you know, randomly, you know, quizzes that, that you've done. So you took the quiz and then you spent the time reviewing the quiz. This is after the first attempt and second attempt also, you spent the time reviewing the quiz. And that is not just applicable for a single quiz, it's actually applicable across the board for any module that you take up. And that just shows the amount of diligence that, that, that you, I mean, the, the diligence level that you demonstrated while doing the course. And that exactly was was reflected in your uh, stage two as well, because those are the habits that you took forward to uh, as as you built upon your process. What would you like to say about that in terms of the reviews? So there is there is, there is a like like a trove of knowledge, you know, in, in the course is, course itself, not the scholar in you. I mean, once I went through my sentence creation course, and then I was giving the ability quizzes in the scholar in you. Mm -hmm. So my score was coming, uh, if I'm not mistaken, V35, V36. Mm -hmm. I was still not happy. Then I was I was making similar, you know, common mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was there was a trend coming out, like you know, for example, comma which why is that modifier not being correct? So I went back to the course again. Then I started reviewing the questions. Well, why was the mistake happening? So that's how, you know, like I cemented my, <clears throat> I, I didn't use a lot of cementing quizzes, but that's mm -hmm. how I cemented my learning. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I would like to share that I uh, got a full actually in sentence correction in GMAT. I took out the ESR as well. So so repeat that. Uh, what did you get in SC? Full, full. Like there was, there was no error in uh, sentence oh correction. God. All the, yeah, all the errors that I made was in critical reasoning. Uh -huh. uh, so yeah, that got my score down a bit. To, okay. to that's yeah. amazing amazing yeah. okay yeah. all right good and you know what i mean if you think about it cementing quizzes they are created so that they provide a structure to to students to every student what you mm -hmm. did instead was you didn't need cementing quizzes because you already had that inbuilt in your uh, process of learning you took ability quizzes and i can see that you took about five or six ability quizzes and you took feedback from that now help me understand how did the quiz feedback help you in terms of whether you rushed through or whether there was a luck factor involved did you utilize that at all in your analysis so uh, in the quizzes like you know uh, it, it was very clearly mentioned that which topics is the question coming out from like in sentence correction is it a modifiers question is it a parallelism question so automatically a trend starts coming out that this topic you know is my weakness and that is actually part of scholarly also in the end they give that analysis that uh, this topic inside, inside that subtopic, inside that subtopic is your weakness. Mm -hmm. So that that was one uh, takeover which I was taking, and then going back and revising the topic again. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one one place where the ability quiz really helped out. 
Okay. And uh, I actually did not give a lot of thought to the luck factor. I was happy, you know, that if luck is helping, then it's good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> yeah. So, which topics did you feel the need to go back and revise in sentence correction? So, first was verbs, like mm-hmm. the tenses. It's really, it's mm-hmm. it's very difficult sometimes, you know, especially when past perfect comes in picture. Mm-hmm. So that's where I faced a lot of issues and modifier as well. Uh, so these two topics were a problem for me. Idioms was a problem, but later on it stopped being a problem. Once a lot of practice uh, went in, then you know we start remembering the various kinds of idioms, and it stops being an issue altogether. Okay. Uh, All right. Yep. So also help me understand what was different when you practiced using official guide and you took a mock, and then when you did the course, what was that thing that created that change in your perspective? Um, the interesting question. So, uh, so when it, so it was it was like you know um, shooting in the dark. I would say after I you know went to the little bit of course that is mentioned just vaguely in the OG, right? It's just mm-hmm. bunch of formulas written, and then you're supposed to remember them and try to answer the question. We had no, I had no idea about the strategy to be used in questions or the approach to be used in questions. And like there are a lot of tricks and nuances in GMAT, right? I, I mean, especially in quant, they'll just write X is an integer or X is a non-positive integer, and that changes the question altogether, especially mm-hmm. in data sufficiency, right? Mm-hmm. So these were nuances I had no idea about at all. Like after, constraints, uh, practicing, the process skill of constraints, right? Yeah, yeah. and then uh, I mean, once you you go step by step in the process skills, and then. Uh, I first made those mistakes, obviously, because I was not exposed to those kind of questions. But then once you go through the process, then you understand that, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, this is how you need to approach such questions. And that's how at least it helped me out. Good. Very nice. All right. Um, So if you were to recommend, I would say, three things to potential candidates who are preparing for GMAT, what would you recommend them? Uh, recommendation in terms of like in terms uh, of how do you prepare for GMAT, the mistakes that you did, and and if you want other people to not make those mistakes, and and the success that you had, if you want other people to be successful without making those mistakes, what would you recommend to them? Uh, so actually, this would be just a summary of what I mentioned earlier. I would first say take up a GMAT, you know, mm-hmm. right? Uh, especially the quant portion. Once you go through the entire course, then you are in a comfortable position. It takes you from anywhere from Q34, Q35, Q, even if you're Q20, for let's say, mm-hmm. you can easily get to Q48, 49 uh, mm-hmm. if you keep on doing the practice and putting in the effort. Uh, because the, the way the program is structured, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, when it comes to verbal, I just would add my process to it. I would give a recommendation that, you know, uh, when you look at the options, don't just look at the right answer and why is it the right answer, but you should always be able to eliminate that why would be four incorrect answers incorrect. Mm-hmm. So that, yeah, so that way it would help you understand how to solve verbal questions, especially in sentence correction. Sometimes it's not the correct answer; it's the best answer, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's a bit tricky at times. Mm-hmm. So this is what I would. Uh, so essentially, uh, during the preparation process, you want the students to be more thorough with their analysis. Right, they, you want people to do spend, you know. So, how much time did you spend in reviewing a solution after you would take the question, after you would answer the question? I mean, as much as as much time as it took for me to read the whole five answers, five options, and then understanding. Which would be what about ten minutes, fifteen minutes? Uh, you can say so. I mean, in difficult questions, ten minutes, obviously, ten fifteen mm-hmm. minutes. If they were easy questions, then five minutes. Five minutes. Uh, right. Yeah, uh, logical. If it, the critical reasoning is all about logic yes? mm-hmm. and if you get the logic then it's quick right even in review it's quick you understand oh yeah that's why my answer is incorrect even though it was sounding so correct when i was uh, actually solving the problem mm-hmm. so yeah okay all right cool the third thing you said uh, quant course then you said um, reviewing appropriately for verbal what's the third thing that you would recommend um i i actually uh, I'm a, I'm a believer in practicing. Uh, the more you practice, uh, there's a there's a quote, right? The more the more you sweat in uh, peace, the less you bleed in war. Mm-hmm. So yeah, 
So the more you practice, the more mock tests you give, the more questions that you uh, go through. Uh, it, it's really helpful because you're exposed to different types of questions that come. And I mean, GMAT also is more of an exam about trends. That you know, once you see a question, you can understand. Okay, this is the topic which is being tested, uh, mm -hmm. and you know some some students are able to even do that. That you know they're not able to uh, gauge which what what kind of a question is uh, you know on the screen. So it really helps if you are able to understand mm -hmm. this basic skill. And uh, yeah, I mean if, the more you practice, like I said, the more you gain confidence and you are able to tackle any question that comes in front of you. Right. But then circling back what you had said earlier, practicing, utilizing the right kind of solutions, because you need to do that thorough review to figure out why mm -hmm. is it that you answered the question incorrectly. So practicing yeah. on and Scholarinium has sufficient number of questions, right? I, I Right. So so you didn't feel the need to go outside to look for any more questions. Is that correct? So, I mean, I, I just practiced from OG and Scholarinium and I couldn't even I couldn't even finish the Scholarinium. Like, I think I finished around 83% or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot. It's a like I guess it's a huge database. Right. Uh, yeah, and going through the entire database, or I, I think there were around 1,200, 1,400 right. questions just in verbal. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. So yeah, so it, it's a lot of uh, material to go through, and I just use OG. I mean, OG is also recommended because yes. these are past questions. So mm -hmm. one should all, also like you know go through the past questions. These are official questions. And they actually supplement each other in the mm -hmm. OG. You don't get the video solutions as you get in EG, right? That's mm -hmm. how do you approach a question and how do you solve them? But uh, yeah, but they supplement each other. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay, Pritam, thank you very much for this. This was very interesting and I wish you good luck for your, uh, for your application process. Thank you so much. Bye.